Hello, hello, Hi. hello. Leslie, Tanya, Mindscape, 717. This is the podcast number 17? It is. Number, number 17. 17. And we're going to talk today about healthcare um, and mm-hmm. mental health and go from there. Um, we haven't started the podcast yet. We start this first and uh, just kind of introduce ourselves. So you're going to hear the introduction all over again. Yeah. <laughs> But today we're having fun. We're drinking mules and we're really good with our drinks, and we feel good with the little filter in the back with the sunset um, by a beach or by palm trees, whatever the case may be. <laughs> it's nice to us. So come with us while we start our journey into our podcast. <laughs> And um, give us a little grace uh, with the technical aspect of it, as usual. Mm-hmm. As usual. <laughs> as usual. So here we go. All right. Let's let's uh, <laughs> let's start this thing. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. I think we got to redo it. You think? I don't know. I, don't I didn't know record either. anything until you put it on. Okay, well, let's... <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> All right. We're going to do this over oh, again. It's always you know... fun. Always fun. <laughs> she says she's so nice to me. It's a good time. Louis like it's totally red by the time it started. <laughs> okay, well, okay. we're doing this again. All right, here we go. Take two. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. It's Leslie and Tanya <laughs> back today with a new podcast, podcast number 17. Woohoo! Mindscape 717. We are really rolling out now and today we're going to talk about um health care and mental mm-hmm. health um basically health care more in the united states with all the subcultures involved in that mm-hmm. um than globally but eventually we do want to talk about the global global um, yeah. mental health aspects of um the health care field um and like i said before health care is such a vast field Mm-hmm. It includes mental health. It, in, it includes um, social workers. It includes nurses, doctors, physicians, dentists. Um, I mean, yeah. And then even the techs, right? I mean, yeah, techs. the techs that are part of that. Exactly. Techs. And, and it even includes public health. Yeah. Like, you know, just community public health or community centers, um, mm-hmm. anything, homelessness. Um, so it includes all of that and all of mm-hmm. those aspects. Because they're so different, though, there's different languages and different cultures within each category. Yeah. Nurses have their own subculture. Doctors have their own subculture. You know, um, yeah. social workers have their own language, you know. And yeah. sometimes there's barriers to interprofessional communication. But... Today we're gonna kind of focus on just um, just the mental health with healthcare in general. So, yeah, because like we you know we mentioned in the um, TikTok that we've been posting, I think um, after several conversations that we had, and obviously you know speaking to what Leslie has been working on um, these programs and things, like we had this conversation when we were going to Pittsburgh, um, and I had never heard of uh, Lorna Breen. Lorna Breen. I've never heard of her before, um, and being that we were just talking about stuff, and then this is what she's working on, so I thought it was a really good idea to kind of talk about it, because it's mental health. Like, just as much as it's within the field of healthcare workers, right? That's the culture in and of itself, and then kind of looking at it and how they've been impacted just from COVID to now, right? Like the last three years, three and a half years have been very hard on this culture, particularly because of everything that they've been exposed to. Um, I know, I mean, when we talk about all the subcultures, right? My my sister is front desk for a clinic um, and she worked 
COVID clinics, right? Like these are all the different within this big healthcare worker kind of, you know, culture, we're looking at the different different sub subcultures because they're all impacted one way or another. Mm-hmm. You see they people are. coming in sick. If people got COVID, you got to test yourself. You got to make sure everyone's like, it's, it's just COVID within itself. The last three and a half years has been a huge issue for this culture particularly. And I think being that we're talking about mental health, I think it's super important to kind of just identify that because it's never too far away from us. Um, doctors are burnout, out, nurses, techs, and front desk, and right, just hearing a little bit of everything that's going on. Um, it is really difficult to, to deal with something like that. And going back to Lorna Breen, I think that's a really good, it's a very unfortunate example, but it's a really good example uh, uh, in regards to mental health and what that looks like for providers in the healthcare field. And for those of you who do not know Lorna Breen, she was a physician in a hospital during COVID who was overworked, overtired, exhausted, burnt out, um, and really did not, she was isolated and didn't feel like she had the support that she needed. Um, she ended up committing suicide, um, unaliving herself, and um, her family, uh, in honor of everything she did and the amount of lives she saved, um, decided to go ahead and build a foundation in her name and honor um, to to create well-being um, courses for healthcare professionals, and it became a huge concern in politics. And so, um, government money was spent on this topic and was given to different organizations to create well-being courses or leadership courses or, you know, to do research on leadership and structure, uh, a very holistic approach from the individual to the macro level, like to the system level, to, to find out what could be done to approach um, healthcare professionals with well-being resources, tools, toolkits, everything you can imagine. And they've done such a good job. They've really done a good job. And so I was hired to, um, in, in the job I am now, uh, to develop programs for, for this reason. And uh, so un it's unfortunate that during the time of COVID, with the isolation and the auction, uh, um, overburden, uh, staff shortages, um, and the craziness that went on, right. that... Um, you know, a lot of our healthcare professionals and healthcare workers um, are depressed, are yeah. anxious, are burnt out, even now. And I hate to say it because nobody wants to hear it, but COVID has come back around. Um, I'm going to a conference in, um, in Atlanta soon, and it's for a public health organization, and we have to wear masks. We're not going to be able to get away. I have to give them all my booster shot information and everything. And the hotel got in touch with me and said, you have to wear masks in the hotel as well. So it's coming back around. Yeah. I know we don't want to hear it. Um, and um, I know it's a, a horrible thing, but at the same time, uh, we have to protect our healers. Like, if we don't protect our healers and those that are taking care of us, right. who's going to take care of us, <laughs> right? Right, because it ain't so. going to be me. I'm going to right now. But you are. You're a frontliner, too. Yeah, but you're... not like them. Like, yeah. I, there is this yeah. very special sense of respect for these providers who, yeah, we had an uptake in mental health as well, and, and it makes sense, but we didn't have to be present in person. We could do virtual yeah. We didn't have to do the, what we were able to protect ourselves. These right. doctors. Not in like, I mean, EMTs and our yeah. firefighters and, yeah. you know, all of, all of our frontline people. Yeah. I mean, are right smack and dab in the middle of everything. And we've got to protect them. Mm -hmm. We have we to. We do. Because even police officers, were, police officers were put into that. Exactly. The work that they were doing to protect, right? We had Emergency the cold responders. fuse and all this shit, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, and I think, right, I, yeah. yes, I do see the value that we brought into, but we were able to still be behind a screen and not like them. They couldn't have that luxury of 
not being exposed to these things and not right. having these like long term things, right? Like there's just so much that they've had to deal with that uh, obviously mental health wise it it took a decline. Already we were isolated on purpose to be safe and yes. then you're adding all of the other shit that comes with it. And it definitely was just things stacking on, on top of each other that very much affected them. So we're going to also be a little controversial here and talk about politics a little bit. Um, so, you know, you're just going to have to forgive us a little. But here's here's the facts. The facts are that with some of these bans in some of these states, um, we can't get the health care needed to those who need it the most. Um, and I'm not going to go into, you know, whether abortion is, you know, a good or, or a bad thing, but I am going to say that no matter what, it is a health thing. And uh, we have doctors who are absolutely wiped out and exhausted and scared and in fear, you know, for their jobs. Um, who want to move out of, you know, whatever these states are, and it's leaving all these gaps. Um, right. And because of that, um, again, people can't get health care. So what do we do when we don't have the health care necessary um, because something happens? So, and, and our doctors leave. I don't think our garage fan is recording. I don't think so either. Hold on a it's second. It's jumping and doing weird things. <laughs> what? Hold on. So, okay. we are continuing with okay. our um, <laughs> little bit of technical difficulty. I don't know what happened there, but we were talking about... Um, we were talking about abortion, um, abortion providers and OBGYNs and especially um, these healthcare professionals. I know this is controversial. We, we both know this is mm -hmm. very controversial. But at the same time, we have to take care of our healers. Um, they're scared. They're worried that they're going to, there's repercussions because of these new laws that um, were provided by uh, lawmakers that don't know health care um, and and unfortunately it's it's building and adding on to right. the stress and the exhaustion and the burnout and everything else they're already feeling suicide rates are up when it comes to health care professionals and I'm talking health care professionals across the field and that's saying a lot oh absolutely well there's a lot of things right I think you if we just look at the last three and a half years already and then all of the changes like you were saying like politically and just COVID and all of the things like that's a, that's a huge burden to bear and trying to understand and still do the job that you want you need to do right like because they are our healers if it weren't for them we wouldn't be making it very far either so there's a sense of responsibility that comes with that job and there's a lot at stake and there is it's lives but then when you when you're restricted that doesn't leave a lot of space for someone to feel supported and if you're not supported in something that is as hard as dealing with lives every day and dealing with death like it was during covid it just it just makes things so much harder for them like you can't like as a human you can't work through those conditions and not be directly affected mentally psychologically emotionally that's a huge toll to have to deal with with something like that yeah what would you suggest as a mental health therapist to practitioners in the healthcare field and I, like i said i already know this is a vast field you yeah. can't say the same thing to a firefighter as you in a rural area for example than you could to uh, a dentist in um in a city so so i i had a client that was emt um in dc so there was, you know, coming from one space to another, he came from a smaller rural tile place to DC of all places. Um, so the way we did our work, cause obviously there's trauma on a daily basis with something mm -hmm. like this. There's nothing that we could do short of quitting the job. You can't do nothing about it. 
Um, so what we would do was just like talk about stuff. I would just give the space it, if the healthcare provider or worker or whatever, if they want to find support, there are people out here that are willing to work with just them and give them the space to kind of just like talk about the shit that you don't know where to put it. You don't, you don't want to take it home. You don't want to sit with it, right? Because even us therapists, we're told to do our own work and not carry things home. And I can't imagine if you see death the way they were seeing the deaths and numbers during COVID, that shit hurts for anyone. I was not there, but that sh- still hurt. Like it was a huge thing to have to process. And for a healthcare worker, I think the only thing that we can offer is space and support. Like honestly, short of telling them to quit, we can't say that. Because right. that's their job. And on the end of a researcher um, who is, uh, you know, researching a very small portion of the healthcare field when it comes to burnout and exhaustion, we're finding that um, when when a worker feels like they can't say anything at work because it's work, um, it affects their family life. So it affects everything to do with their family life. They feel isolated from the family. They don't feel like there's a connection. Right. Uh, they don't feel like they can do their personal, you know, hobbies um, or interests with the family um, because they're exhausted. They're exhausted, and that's the number one thing that we see everywhere is this mm-hmm. frustration and exhaustion. And, that and depression is the word. that hits yeah. right. Like there's a sense of depression, the sadness, the guilt, the heaviness. The not being able to get out of bed. The mass exodus of healthcare professionals getting out of the field because they don't feel supported and they don't feel like they're heard. Right. So so I would suggest that um, if you have somebody in the healthcare field, just let them know you care. Yeah. That's, you know, I think think that's like the number one thing that we can do is just say, hey, we really do care. We really are there for you, um, whatever you need. And ask them what the support look like mm-hmm. for you. Cause let's not assume that they, that we know what's best for them by like, Oh, well don't talk about it. It's too much. No, motherfucker. Like, let's talk about it. Exactly. Like I don't, and I get this from even people that are without, that are not in the healthcare, but if you want, if you need to talk about it, talk about it. And if someone's like, Oh, well, if you bring it up, then that's all. No. Cause you're going to think about it anyway. So maybe that's not the person you go to. Maybe you go find one of me, you find a therapist that you could talk to and literally just like unload and leave it with us, right? Because that's our job to take care of. But some people can't handle. Some people don't want to hear things because they can't handle it. But don't assume that if you like, well, don't talk about it. No, no. Talk about it. Let them vent it out. And if they feel safe, then that's great. And if you can't handle it, also say that. Say, you know what? This is a lot and I'm so sorry, but let's find you support. Let's find you someone you can talk to. If you can't be that support, then help them find someone that will hear their things and just be like, damn, like that really sucks. Like, I'm so sorry. Like what does support look like? What can we do to better support you in regards to like self-care, self-love, self-compassion, compassion is so hard to have when you're burnt the fuck out and you don't take care of yourself. So I think as a therapist, I would, I would always ask first, like, what do you need? Like what does support look Mm -hmm. like for you? Because sometimes people want to ignore the problem. Right. They don't want to talk about it because they can't handle it and they're not honest enough. They're like, no, no, no. If you talk about it, then that's all you're going to think about. Nah, he woke up with this and he's going to go to bed with this. And yeah. if you don't want to listen to it, then you can just say that. So you know what? I don't think I can handle that. Like, let's find you someone to talk to. So, you know, even in regular therapy, they always say, um, don't go to bed angry. Like communication is the number one thing. You know, whatever. I don't know if I actually believe that. Sometimes you just need to cool off and sometimes sleep helps. Mm -hmm. But um, regardless, one of the biggest things is don't go to bed angry, especially if you have a spouse or family or or anything like that, um, because anxiety can, can accrue. But we also don't want exhaustion and burnout and, um, and, and fatigue to, to settle in. So it might be a good idea to just communicate before bed. You know, look, I'm going to be here for you. You know, just tell me what you need. Tell me what you need. Um, You know, if you need an extra bit of self-care, I'm going to do whatever I can on my end to step up. You know. Yeah. 
because um, they are facing an epidemic. They are facing a mass exodus. They are facing burnout right. in uh, bigger, bigger numbers than are than are being shown. Yeah, um, we are seeing it. I mean, I'm because I'm in that field. Um, I'm seeing it everywhere. But um, I see it on TikTok too. Some physicians and some doctors and nurses, nurses especially. Thank God for our nurses. Um, you know. Just all these people coming out and saying, hey, listen to us, hear us, talk to us. Yeah. Um, you know, we're telling you we're suffering. Um, there's mass staff shortage. That's got to be a problem. That's yeah. got to be a massive problem. And uh, there's increased workplace violence. Look at all that fucking aggression. Like, that aggression, irritability comes with anxiety. And you put yourself in a very traumatic experience. Like, of course you're going to take it out on someone. Someone's going to come at you the wrong way. And it's a perfect storm. If you're in a hospital, people already are all activated. Because Lord forbid someone is dying. You don't know how to handle it. Everybody's angry. Everybody's irritable. Everybody is unsure. Of course, it's gonna it's gonna react in a way where it's gonna be an explosion, and unfortunately, the healthcare workers are the ones who have to deal with that explosion from the patients' families, right? Like these families are just as anxious or so it's just sad as you know the workers themselves. It's yeah. a lot of stuff. It's just it just adds on. It just keeps adding on to everything, and and this is just even speaking from the last three and a half years, like. Let's not even get into what what it was before no. this. Oh, like yeah. there was problems before. COVID, this has always but, been an issue, yeah. but just like just the just the kind of like have this range of like an idea of really what's going on because if you already have past issues and then you're looking at something like a pandemic, like we've been going through, this shit it just adds so much more stress to it. And if there's no one to support these people, they're not going to make it out. They're just not right. We're trying, though, we're trying to spread the word, and uh, yeah. we hope that you hear us just as much as we're trying to hear you. Um, we um, have especially been kind of brought to this point um, with, with this topic because it's so prevalent. Yeah. And we're seeing so many people leave the field. So yeah. many people. Oh, absolutely. And it, it's just, again, we we wouldn't be doing this and having these conversations if it wasn't important. Culture and mental health, they're just such broad things, right? Because we can see as anything as a culture. And again, this is one of the cultures that I think there has been such an uptake. And because Leslie is so, like, in it, um, I thought it was just, it was one of those things that we just, we needed to talk about. Because I think because of where we are with COVID and, you know, people are like, no, it's fine. No, like this is going to be something that we still got to watch out for because it's still it's not going to just disappear. Right. It doesn't just go away because we will it to. But just to see where we're going with this. Right. Because we still got to be careful. We still got to take care of our people, because if it is if it wasn't for them, I don't know where we would all be. Um, and also, I used to work at a clinic um, and just seeing what that looked like for providers. Right. Just the MAs, the medical assistants. It was a small clinic. Um but nonetheless, there were still a lot of things that they had to deal with. So just be kind, if nothing else. Be kind to the healthcare workers. If you can't bring in or take in their stuff, please let them find some support. And if they don't know where to look, help them. Yeah. Um, sometimes it is really difficult for someone to be in it and know that they need help. Um, if we can just ask them like what the support looked like for you and kind of just start that conversation if you can't take it in and that's you're not supposed to i don't think just anyone can hear these very traumatic situations and not be hurt by them but if you can't do it please help them find someone like give them options to be like hey i found these let's try it out let's see what happens um because like leslie said it does impact every aspect of your life you can't be present for your spouse or your kids if you're worried about what just happened and you can't Ross as a traumatic experience. If someone just died. Mm -hmm. It impacts us, yeah. like the general public. So that's something we yeah. have to 
definitely be aware of. If you don't want to be impacted, then help the healers, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Help heal the healers just as much as, you know, the healers Absolutely. need it. But, but here's the thing. Here's another aspect of it is the, um, the leaders are trying to push resilience training onto healthcare workers. And that's what I do, right? I'm not, I'm not going to lie about that. Um, but resilience has become this hot negative term because what has happened is it's added onto the stress rather than reduced the stress because now you're forced to take these classes during your time or during time that's convenient, inconvenient to you, mm -hmm. um, in order to meet the needs of leadership. And sometimes that is so difficult. So we're trying our hardest on the back end to make it as easy as possible. Right. To get these things out to our healthcare leaders, because we're holistic, as well as um, to the systems and the executives, all the way down to the individual level. But. Um, we know it's difficult. We know it's difficult for the healthcare yeah. um, field. And so, um, you know, resilience is kind of the negative term, but now we're calling it just plain well being because, well, it is. you know, like, it literally, is. Literally, it is yeah. that, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> people are yeah. very much trying to turn things into either something pop culture, pop psychology, right. and it's really not that. It really is it well being. Because you have very to be much. self aware. All of us have to be self-aware of how we're feeling inside in order to remedy the situation anyhow. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, and this is where if someone doesn't and you sense something is wrong, then call them out a little bit about it. Be like, hey, like, are you okay? Yeah. Like, do you need to talk to someone? And if you can be available, be available. If you cannot, help them find someone to be available for them. Because I'm telling you, they are going through it. Remember that self-care is not selfish. Nope. We have to take care of ourselves in order to take care of others. And then help take care of others yeah. in the same notion of be like, hey, if you need help, like, let's find you someone or maybe I can give an ear until I can't anymore and I'll draw that boundary. But it's so important. Please just, like, call them out and just say, hey, it, it looks like you're a little frustrated. It looks like you're a little sad. They can't get out of bed. Be like, all right, we got to do something about this. Like, we gotta, we gotta be open and willing to help them with those situations because it's very difficult out here. So it is difficult, but we know you um, will be there if you hear the voices. Um, you know, help the healers, yeah. let them heal themselves so that all of us can benefit. <laughs> Every single one of us, and we know we talked about a little bit of controversial, you know, things, politics and abortion and things like that and suicide. Um, but facts are facts. This is real life. I mean, we're not going to pussyfoot around the, no. the topic just because, you know, people are upset about hearing, um, you know, those words. It's a real issue. Um, and it's affecting all of us. We talk about this shit every day. I know. We always ask the questions. Are you suicidal? Do you feel like you mm -hmm. want to hurt yourself? Do you feel like... This is something that we would not be doing our job if we didn't ask these questions. As a therapist, I literally have to use those words almost on a daily basis. So the fact that we can't say that is ridiculous to me. Anyway, so next time we are going to, uh, we're going to be dressed up, right? Are we dressed up for Halloween for next, next? Yeah, we are. We're going to dress up. <laughs> I'm supposed to be getting my costume tomorrow. <laughs> are you? Yeah, I ordered it, girl. So there you go. We're going to dress yeah. up and, and have fun. You can watch us on YouTube. Um, you know, instead of listening to the podcast, you can go straight to YouTube. Whatever you want to yeah, do. That's going to be a whole thing. Yeah, a whole thing. yeah, yeah. So we should we should have some fun. And then after that, we're going to Wilmington, North Carolina. We're going to take you with us. We're going to do a lot of videos so on that. So excited. And, uh, you know, lots of humor and laughter, food and always. travel and culture. Always. Um, and as always, mental health. So I think that's going to be it for today. Please leave comments. Ask some questions. We want to be there for you. Um, watch us on TikTok because we're all over the place. You can we're ask trying to questions. Be. We're trying to be. So Insta. let us know. Mm -hmm. We're there, and you can always email us, mindscape717 um, at gmail. And we have a website out, mindscape717.com. Come visit us. Let us know what you think of it. 
um, or if we need to improve it or give us suggestions. We're all about that. Yes, please. Yeah. All right. All right. Take care, guys. Thank you very much. See you later. All right. So we got that done and we're still on here. Um, but that's okay. Um, that's it for today. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next time. Bye.